In a previous video, I announced that I am now working on building a custom car audio system for a smart car demo build. And as part of that system, I'm making this custom amplifier rack. This build is focused on simple sound quality and digital signal processor control, making this system sound great, but we want it to look great as well with the addition of this amp rack. In this video, I'm going to show you advanced wood shaping with a router, how to create these detailed grooves, and tons more. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Let's get started with talking about the design and plan for this project. To get this project underway, I first wanted to start here with a plan. Now, especially since there are multiple different sponsors involved and different parties working on different aspects of this project, I thought it was important to create a 3D model so that I could communicate my idea for how I wanted to build this. The plan here is to have the digital signal processor in the middle, have an amplifier on each side, and then this is going to be sort of a shell made of multiple different layers stacked together. This entire beauty panel here here will actually be completely removable and will have plenty of room for wiring inside of this shell. Also within the shell is this ledge right here. This allows the insert beauty panel to sit upon it. That beauty panel will feature these detailed inserts here that have these grooves cut into them. I have some brushed aluminum silver inserts that match some of the detail within the smart car itself. And then we also have these blue acrylic inserts to kind of accent the panel. As far as shaping goes, we have some chamfer cuts on the inside of these cutouts. We have some roundover cuts on the inside of this cutout here, as well as this edge here and then we have a large 30 degree cut around the outside of this shell giving this whole assembly some shape and really defining its dimension and look. Again, creating this overall rendering allowed me to get approval from some of the different people that I'm working with on this project. So now that I have all of this data, I can send it over to a CNC machine and start making these cuts. So here is all the initial master shapes that I got off the CNC machine. It's four different pieces. I have this piece here. I have the two inserts, which is technically the same piece. It's just mirrored over. I have this outside shape. And then I also have another that has the same outside perimeter, but it does have that lip so that our insert piece can sit down inside and mount against it. Now, I definitely want to point out, don't be discouraged if you don't have a CNC. You can definitely still make this type of shapes. I've done plenty of builds where I've only used actual templates like this to make these shapes. As an example, this shape inside here is just a series of different arcs. And then we have some straight lines with a straight template for our DSP and amplifiers. And then in some of the corners, we just have a little radius. I don't know the exact amount of time, but I spent well over 10 hours coming up with this design and doing all the work on the computer. So you definitely have to take into account that that is time spent making these shapes too. And once I had that data, I was then obviously able to export it. My point here is once you take into account all that time spent modeling, it's not just as easy as hitting the go button on the CNC. There's a ton of time invested into getting to these shapes. And I find that a lot of times just using the templates from the get go without a rendering is a lot faster. To continue the build process, I'm gonna take our master pieces here and I'm gonna combine them to create a base piece for this insert. So what I did there on the jigsaw is called rough cutting and I did that in preparation to use my flush trim bit 
here on the router. A flush trim bit has a cutter down here and then a bearing on top. The bearing will ride against our pieces that we already made and it's going to trim what's below it. And I actually usually use two different flush trim bits. This bit here is a straight flute flush trim bit. I use this more when I know it's going to be a finished piece, like this base is going to be a finished piece because this bit here, the upcut spiral bit, it tends to leave a little bit more of a flaky edge that you kind of have to sand. And this is a lot better if you want to just blaze through some material without rough cutting. But in this case, I want that nice edge quality. So I'm going with a flush trim bit. Let's use it and get all of these nice and flush. If you remember in my designed model, I want to add some acrylic edges around the insides here, so I need to create a little bit of clearance in this wooden piece. To do this, I'm using a rabbiting bit. I'm loading the rabbiting bit into the router and it's going to cut into the workpiece a quarter of an inch. Now I need to measure how thick I want it to cut into the piece to allow the clearance for my acrylic. So I'm measuring the acrylic here and then I'll raise the bit out of the table that same amount. With the bit properly adjusted, I can now make the cutting pass. So now that we've done that, we obviously have clearance for those acrylic pieces that will go inside of here, but a rabbiting bit isn't only good for creating clearance for something like acrylic, we can also use it to make preparations for our vinyl upholstery. And since I have that bit loaded in right now, I wanna do the preparations on this piece. When I cut a similar rabbit groove on the back side of this top piece, it's gonna give me an area to wrap the vinyl around and have a nice edge to cut it against. You guys will see that in a second, but before I do that rabbiting cut, I need to do my chamfer cut on this front piece first in order to soften up these edges and give them a nice look of detail. I'll be using this cute really little guy here. After all, this is only quarter inch material. This is from the Mobile Solutions Mini router bit set. Here's a quick pro tip for you guys. I always keep an extra couple of pieces of different thicknesses of material at the ready so I can test my cuts. I've already tested this cut. It's going to give me that chamfer right there and then I also tested the rabbit on the back side just to make sure all my bit height adjustments are good. So I'm gonna make this chamfer cut and then we'll make the rabbit cut. So now that I have all these small little grooves cut on the back side of the panel here, these will give me some relief to wrap the vinyl around to the back side of the panel. <laughs> and, and then trim the edge. If you remember on my rendering on this corner piece here, I have all these grooves. I wanna make those grooves next on these pieces here, but these just serve as my master templates. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make those grooves on a separate piece first, and then I can precisely line them up the way I want them to be, and then flush trim a copy, cutting out that shape that already has the grooves. Let's get those grooves made. To make these grooves, we're gonna do a little bit of router trickery here. So first of all, I have a flat V bit loaded up. You could use any sort of bit like this. You could use like a bull nose bit where it's more rounded. You could use a V bit. In this case, I'm using that flat V bit. And what I've done is I've stuck two different pieces to my table using template tape. And then I have these pieces here. These are going to allow me to index the piece a half of an inch at a time because these are half inch thick boards. The plan here is I'll slide my piece through making the cut, and then once I'm done making one pass, I'll move one of these boards over here, which will shift the wood one half of an inch, and I can do that four different times. After making those cutting passes, we are left with these grooves here. Now I want to make this shape on our new piece. So I've traced out an outline here. I'm gonna rough cut it using a jigsaw.
Now that we have all the woodwork done for our insert piece, I need to make this assembly here. This is the actual shell that's going to hold the amplifiers and DSP. I'll start this process with first attaching the bottom of the assembly. And to do this, I'm tracing out one of the master shapes of the template, and then I'm using permanent CA glue because I'm going to be stacking these layers together. This first piece I've attached is the bottom of the assembly, so I'm only cutting away the outside edge of the material. Now that the first two layers are attached together, I'm going to take the beauty panel and line it up on the inside of this, and I'm going to trace those cutouts. That way later when I attach the amplifiers and the DSP, I know exactly where to position them. I'll continue the stacking process once again using the CA glue and then trimming on the router, but this time I'll also be trimming out the inside of the shape as it is a hollow shell. Now the only thing kind of strange here for my assembly is I wanted to have that one layer that had that inset ledge that the beauty panel can sit upon, so for this I just had to carefully line that up as it was pre-cut. The shell assembly is complete. Let's do a quick test fit with the amplifier and DSP. They'll be inside something like this. We have plenty of room for wiring between each of the different devices. And let's see what our insert panel looks like here. Here we have it. This is definitely going to look good, especially once we add those interior acrylic pieces that go around the outside trim of each of those holes. The next step here is I need to do some shaping to the outside of this shell piece in order to actually give it more of a profile and make it look a lot better in the vehicle. So we're going to be using a couple of special router bits to do this. The first bit is this bit here, the rocket bit. This is a rather large bit. So I'm only gonna cut about half of the cutting height on my first pass and then I'll raise this bit up and make a second pass for the final cut. So after making those cutting passes with that bit, you can see it has this nice round over on the top edge and it did cut at an angle, but I do think I wanna change this up a little bit and I did wanna illustrate a point here. In my rendering, I used a 30 degree bit, which gave me a much better result that I was looking for, but I wanted to try this bit first because the first bit I tried here removes less material. So I wanted to do this as part of a lesson to you guys. If you aren't sure what profile bit you wanna use, always try the one that removes less material first because since I don't like this, it's not a big deal. I can now do the different bit. This guy right here, a 30 degree or 60 degree bit, depending on how you look at it, it's going to remove more material and it's going to bring this edge here closer to this inside edge, which is more of the shape that I was looking for. So once I'm done with that 30 degree bit, this gives me much more of the profile I was looking for. It has much more of a shaped look from the side. It doesn't look still vertical, but there is an issue here. You'll notice that I didn't go all the way around with the 30 degree bit, and that was intentional because I knew it would eat into this thin section here and it would remove too much material. So I didn't want that. So I stopped right here. So what I need to do, it's not a big deal, do this quite often, is I need to actually blend the transition between the 30 degree section here and this corner here that I'll be using a round over bit on. So to blend it is simple enough. I'm just going to use some sandpaper and remove this hard edge. No big deal at all after I blend that corner. It just looks something like this. And now it's prepared for me to do that round over. And just like that, we have a really nice blend going from our 30 degree chamfer to this round over. And just so you guys know, I also round over the inside edge here. So now we have a nice complete shell. Now we know that in the vehicle, the wires are going to be ran underneath the carpet to these two locations. So I need to make a hole in order for the wires to pass through into this cavity. For this, I'm just gonna use a couple of circle template cutting passes like so on the router. I wanted to make sure that the edges on this circle aren't hard since they'll have wires running over them, so I also used a round over bit on my little handheld router here to soften that edge. To hold the amplifiers and DSP in this amp rack, I'm going to be using threaded inserts along with these machine fasteners. I first mark the center of each hole using a center punch and then drill a through hole using a small drill bit that is specially sized for those inserts. To see a much more advanced video about how to use these, definitely check out the link at the annotation up in the corner of the screen or down in the video description. Overall, the advantage of these is that I can take those screws in and out multiple times without degrading the quality of that hole, so now I can get all the amplifiers and DSP mounted into the rack.
In a second here, I want to show you these acrylic beauty panel pieces that I made, but really quick, I want to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. If you guys haven't seen these amplifiers yet, these are the Audio Control ACM, which stands for Micro Amplifiers. These are becoming known for their substantial power and great sound quality in such a small size. These amps are really great for sound system design as they are easy to add to an existing system or you could use them for your full system. There's a one channel version, which is great for subwoofers, four channel, which is great for speakers. We're using both of them in this build. And there's also a two channel version. All of these amplifiers have audio controls, line output converter technology built in, which makes them great for adding on to an existing OEM system. To learn more about the ACM lineup, definitely check out the link down in the video description. So now I can start adding my beauty panel pieces to the top. Now I'm not gonna fully assemble this obviously until I've done the upholstery but I do want to give you guys an idea how this looks so in the meantime I did use a laser in order to cut some of these different acrylic pieces so I have these blue pieces that go over each of the amplifiers as well as over the DSP and you can see that they sit down in this notch that we created earlier with the rabbiting bit on these, I didn't want just the stereotypical same shape, so I actually brought this corner of this shape in a little bit just to give it a little bit more accent. I did that on each side, and then here I also added a little bit of curvature as well. In the corners, I have these wooden pieces that we made earlier, and over each of these, I used a slightly different acrylic. This has a brushed aluminum look. This matches some of the different accents within the vehicle with its silver reflective look. Using that same acrylic, I also laser etched our little sponsor panel here for all the different sponsors of the Smart Car build. And then over that insert here, I just have another blue insert. This will show once we put the main insert on top. So everything fully assembled looks like this. I am really, really happy with how all of this has come together so far. I do have some decisions to make on how we're going to upholster this, which is what I'll show on the next video. This will be carpet to match the carpet of the vehicle. These two pieces here are gonna be wrapped in vinyl, but what I do need to decide is the interior of the vehicle has a two-tone vinyl. I'm wondering if I should make both of these the same color of vinyl, or if I should make this like a light color and this a dark color. What do you guys think? I did want to show this too. So obviously there's limited storage space in the back of the smart car. So I'm going to wrap this with carpet too, and it can just go on like that. If there ever does need to be something set in the back, it's easy enough to cover up this whole panel. To make sure that you see the rest of this build along with car audio lessons and additional how-to builds in the future, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. You can learn more about the audio control ACM lineup of amplifiers at the link down in the video description. A special thanks to them for being a monthly channel sponsor. Also, a special thanks to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marcos, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon membership team. Thank you guys for watching.